Hey, so, uh, show's canceled. You might have seen my big post. I kind of, uh, got in a little bit of hot water. See, I was using my Patreon to fund this channel, and it was pretty expensive. I'm using this app called Character Animator. It's this live 2D animation program from Adobe, and it's actually pretty sweet. Uh, it's the way I could use and control this cartoon character, uh, which actually works out pretty well. But the thing is, it was just taking so much resources. The exports are massive and the editing and compositing steps for using this cartoon was just a lot to handle. Basically I was burning through all my Patreon money working with my editor and my animator to make this thing happen and um, I just can't afford it. Just can't afford it. However, I didn't want to leave you guys high and dry because you have subscribed to this channel and I super appreciate it. So I'm going to try doing the last six episodes that I have written live action like this. Maybe it'll be good. Maybe it'll be weird, but hopefully I can get you guys the information uh, in a straightforward manner and uh, that's the most important thing to me, I think. Let's do something nice and easy today. Uh, I'm going to show you how to master in Ableton Live using just default plugins. You, you know me, I love my plugins, but uh, there's a lot we could do with just the basic Ableton stuff. So here, check it out. The first thing I do is I throw a limiter on there, boom. You may be noticing I'm in a brand new blank clean slate project with just the exported WAV file of my song. Uh, this saves on CPU and makes it a little bit easier to do the mastering work. First thing first, I'm gonna go to the loudest section of the song, set my limiter. Let's set my limiter by pushing up this gain until we see uh, we see the limiter start to engage. All right, so we're just getting a little movement here. That's great. So we basically set the loudness here, and now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a bus compressor. This is a special kind of compressor that's made specifically to be used on a group of instruments. Ableton comes with one called the glue compressor, and it's awesome. And I'm going to show you the glue compressor settings right now. You should be using attack all the way up, release all the way down. And this is actually based on this classic compressor called the SSL. Uh, I'll show you the Waves version of it. Um, and this looks pretty similar to what it, you, what the actual hardware one looks like. And uh, this was nicknamed the Hit Maker because it was used on so many hit records. Uh, but Ableton's got its own version, the glue. And uh, like I said, the attack slow as possible at 30, release fast as possible. And ratio, I recommend you start on two, but four could be good and 10 could be good for really extreme pumpy things. And uh, now you just set the threshold here and then we'll get it going. We set the threshold until we see the meter dialing. So now we're getting this nice like glue kind of pumping sound. And every time we add a plug-in, every time we adjust something, we want to go back to our limiter and make sure that uh, it's still hitting right in the same way. We want to keep this limiter under between zero and negative six. More than that, it'll start to get a little grody. The Ableton limiter gets, gets a little grody. All right, so now that we got our compressor on and our limiter, the track's basically mastered. Um, but we're gonna do a couple more things. Let's throw an EQ on here. I like EQ8. Boom. And we're putting this on after the compressor. And if you right click on it and check this oversampling mode, that'll give us higher quality. It uses a bit more CPU, but it's a higher quality EQ. And here's some basic things you can try out on your track. Cutting off the very, very low end. We're talking like 30 hertz below. This can clean it up. You can add a little sparkle by adding a boost around somewhere between 16 and 20k. Ah, uh, see this is nice. Oh, this is actually about 12k. Just had the track worked out. If you want a little more forward, you want to hear your leads a little bit more, uh, a little boost between 1 and 3k could be nice. Let's try that. Gets a little spicy at 2.5 for this track, maybe. I've been doing this nice mid-range boost at 1.5k lately for like the lo-fi stuff and I think it sounds pretty good. And if you wanted your bass to be pulled out a little bit, we'll do a little boost between uh, it oops, change this over here to a boosty bell boy, a bell boy. And uh, we have, uh, we could just sweep it around and you could hear what frequencies sound nice. That sounds like a mess. This is also sounds like a mess. You know, maybe, uh, maybe we don't want to boost the low mids. I think it sounds actually pretty good in the mix. But if you wanted to take a little bit away, 
see how it instantly gives the track a more sparse kind of open feeling, so that's an option. I don't think we need it on the track. I actually am pretty happy with my mix. And you could adjust this Q here to make it tighter or wider. I believe this Q gets set automatically in the latest version of Ableton, but if you want to make it a tighter boost. So this is very simple stuff we have on the EQ. Now if we wanted a little bit more control, we could put a multi-band compressor on. Here we go. Multi-band dynamics. And I'm not a huge fan of Ableton's uh, multi-band dynamics, but I'll show you how it works. It's pretty straightforward. You can sort of click and use it visually. I had to stop the music and think for a moment. Uh, I put the multi-band after the glue, but before the EQ. And if you want to remember how to put your EQ at the end, think of the EQ as the knife that you cut your cake with. All right, and you wouldn't want to cut your cake while it's still batter, right? The compressors are the oven baking our sound into a nice, firm, compressed, audio file and then uh, we're going to be using our EQ afterward to cut our cake and sort of put it put it there so we got our cuts already in place kind of working in reverse here uh, gonna put the multi-band on and then uh, once we adjust that we'll look at the limiter one more time and uh, we'll be done it's real pretty simple stuff so the way this multi-band works is you could boost your low mids and highs with the gain here oh that's making it really big and then by clicking and dragging this up and down, we set how much compression we want. And it's basically saying, you know, when the, when the kick goes above this little mark, it gets compressed by a ton or a little. And you can even expand it, which uh, is kind of wild. I'm, we're not going to do it. I'm just going to compress the bass a little bit to give it a little bit like of a meatier, kind of fuller quality and also make that bass hit really consistently. And say we wanted to compress the high end a little bit too, I'll have to boost it quite a bit to get it up in our range, but then I can cut it again over here. So I'll push it way up. Oh, it's really spicy now, but then I'll compensate and I'll just compress it a little. And I want that release a little slow for me. And you know what? I'm not even going to touch the mids. I like the mids being open. I don't really want to compress it too much. So now we revisit our limiter. We see, oh yeah, we're still between zero and six. We want a little bit louder. We can push it up. And that's basically it right there. This is just the bare bones master. We got the glue compressor compressing the bus, compressing the whole sound. We got multiband giving us a little bit more control. Then our EQ with oversampling turned on to sort of shape up the track, cut out low end if we didn't need it, or kind of boost and, and polish up. And the very end is our limiter here. Just go in ahead and chopping the top off the waveform and making it nice and loud and full. A last thing I want to talk about is the ceiling by default is negative 0.3. Uh, this has been the standard for a very, very long time because when you export an audio file um, and then compress it, that the, the nature of compression is going to make your track louder. So uh, by putting the ceiling a little bit below zero and not at zero, it kind of safeguards from distortion. But because of the algorithm on Twitter and Instagram specifically, I put negative 0.7 now because I find that 0.3 doesn't really cut it. Um, some of my tracks are just getting totally crushed, particularly when I upload it to social media. So now I put it at negative 0.7 on my limiter. Uh, it is not a perceptual difference, but uh, I think it makes it a little bit safer. So that's it. So pretty simple, right? Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, I'm gonna make a few more episodes in this format. And if this works for you, that would, that would be awesome because um, I want to share this info. I want us all to become better producers, better mixers. So good luck on your producer quest. Thanks for watching. Oh yeah, check out my new song, uh, Widgeon. It's uh, it's by my new project, Bird Boy. Uh, it's basically DJ Cop Man with bird sounds instead of chip tune. Uh, you can call it chirp tune. You go on the DJ Cop Man profile on Apple Music or Spotify. Bird Boy, the debut track is Widgeon. Uh, it has a much more robust mastering channel, but. Uh, there, there it is. Check it out if you want. And uh, yes, thanks for watching.